had a collection for the Black Students Guide to Colleges. This is in keeping with our theme about researching the college experience for this section of the SPIRE event. Uh, our presenters associated with this presentation will be Will Thomas, Isabel Bortner, and Tashira Dean. And a brief abstract related to their project uh, says, an empirically based guide for college admissions is needed for black families who seek the best fit schools for their college bound teens. Students want to know about the campus climate and support systems in place. Our panel today will discuss the stages involved in creating surveys to collect data that served as the guide's information base. So with that, I give you our next presentation, Will, Isabel, and Tashira. Hello, I'm going to share my screen now. Okay. Hello everyone. Thank you to Spires for giving us the opportunity to present our research on the creation of the Black Students Guide to College 5th edition. My name is Will Thomas and I'll be presenting this panel alongside my collaborators Tashira Dean and Bella Bordner. Our research is founded on the principles of the original edition of the Black Students Guide to Colleges. Dr. Barry Beckham, the original editor, collected data from administered surveys to hundreds of institutions across America to obtain empirical evidence based on the feedback of Black students and college administrators. With this data, he was able to construct a guide full of college profiles, which contain information that is relevant to Black students. He identified five critical dimensions, academics, support services, Black student organizations, social life, and the overall climate. There were four editions of the Black Students Guide to Colleges, the most recent being published in, in 1997. We're working closely with Dr. Beckham, who has retired and lives in Silver Spring, Maryland. He has given Dr. Diane Graves, who this panel is working under, full authority to revise and update a fifth edition of this guide. We are honored to build off of Dr. Beckham's work. Now let's discuss why a student guide for Black college students is necessary. Despite the unique pressures of anti-Black racism that Black students face in campus life, college guides specific to the Black student experience are few and far between. To illustrate why a fifth edition is needed, let me introduce you all to Michelle. Michelle moved from, DC, from the DC area to a smaller town to study law as a 2019 freshman. She arrived on campus and noticed fewer Black students than she was used to being around in high school, and she doesn't recognize many people. However, the campus and surrounding area are beautiful, and she's made some new friends fast. She enjoyed her first year of classes, but she has been struggling to adjust to life at this new institution. Now let's look at why. Let's imagine a college where if you can look to the left at the yellow bars, um, black men are the left bar and black women are the right bar. Now Mich Michelle is attending a college where the, the four-year graduation rate is 61%, but only 23.1% percent of black college students or of black male students have graduated sorry 61 percent of enrollments are white and 12.8 percent of enrollments are black white students account for almost nine times more degrees than the black students despite the white enrollment rate only being four to five times higher and black men only account for just under two percent of degrees awarded total and black women only receiving 5.31 percent the college campus that michelle is attending is hood college now let's look at the campus climate at Hood College to understand what's going on. Hood College vocally supports Black Lives Matter, has a Black student union, and has a sizable proportion of Black students. But this is not necessarily enough and we should not settle for less. Let's look at some incidents that have happened on campus since I have started attending here. There have been incidents such as a guard who is wearing a hate insignia daily, and he was, not he was not terminated until criticism went public online alongside an open letter from alumni which disavowed his employment. Racist graffiti and cyber attacks have also occurred as well as dorm harassment, such as slurs being written on whiteboards. These incidents have stressed out Michelle. She doesn't feel very welcome in her dorm and she avoids campus after dark. She struggles to focus on work and she sometimes wonders if maybe a different campus would have been a better fit for her. 
These incidents do not define Hood, and I am not here to demonize, only criticize. Hood is neither the best or worst institution for Black students, but it's important to know that even on our home campus and across campuses around America, these issues are prevalent. And Black students have the right to an informed decision when it comes to their higher education. Hood College is a fantastic institution with professors who are invested in student success, and here we are now discussing Black student success. That being said, Michelle deserves to be able to know both the pros and cons she may face at Hood, as well as any other institution that she's considering. Let's establish some historical context for Black college student experiences and identify some factors that would have helped guide Michelle during her college search process. I'm handing it over to Tashira. Or Val, I'm so sorry. <laughs> the literature on the Black college student experience supports the five dimensions highlighted by Dr. Beckham in the original guide. Research has found that Black students, especially Black males, suffer from increased attrition rates and many race-related struggles, including stereotype threat to performance, isolation due to racial and social climate on campuses, and that comes from the low numbers of Black students and staff. For a review of this literature, please see Drury and Brooms, where systemic barriers such as these can prevent them from achieving their highest potential of success in academics. Additionally, there's a historical precedent for safety concerns between Black students and campus security, as well as local police officers. Black men especially are at increased risk due to the cumulative stress of systemic racism, poor social and mental health support, and being racially profiled by faculty, staff, and law enforcement at the institution, inside and outside of the classroom. These issues are most prominent in PWIs, predominantly white institutions, as these schools were built to exclude Black students. Conversely, HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities, tend to have very high proportions of black students and staff, as well as certain features that support and uplift black students. However, even these institutions have work to do when it comes to supporting black students that are gay, queer, and or gender nonconforming. Research has found that black males tend to respond very positively if given the opportunity to organize and congregate in a college group that empowers black men. Jury and Brooms identified three main dimensions of empowerment, brotherhoods and bonds, having a strong support network, and cultural enrichment for identity development. Black women respond similarly well when provided with the opportunity to make sisterly bonds and organizations. Strayhorn found that having supportive relationships in the college environment was associated with greater student satisfaction with college. Satisfaction was also with, associated with higher academic performance. Gurren and colleagues found that an ethnically diverse environment contributes positively to educational outcomes for all college students. Now that a general overview has been provided for why this guide is so relevant today for black students involved in the college search process, let's examine more specifics for how we're updating the guide. The college admissions process itself has changed dramatically since the fourth edition of the guide was published in 1997, as well as the cultural context that black Americans are currently living in. And now I will hand it over to Tashara. Okay, so why have we decided to update the guide now? Well, since 2020, the Black community has been caught in the intersections of racial unrest, COVID-19, and economic crisis. Although racial tensions have increased in the last four years, they have been especially prominent this past summer with the Black Lives Matter protests that have drastically increased since May 26, 2020, the day, the day after the murder of George Floyd during a police arrest. Many other unfortunate murders have occurred since and has led to exhaustion for the Black community. These increased racial tensions have also been reflected across college campuses, well, on college campuses across the country, excuse me, including this one. Implicit or unconscious bias, microaggressions, stereotyping, lack of inclusion, and activism are some of the issues that Black students face. With many colleges and universities only having a few Black faculty members, there's a lack of guidance and assistance to these students, which is by no means the fault of black faculty. Higher education, higher education systems overall are lacking in categories of inclusion when it comes to black students and their faculty. COVID-19 has also played a big role in disadvantaging black Americans. The pandemic has disproportionately affected the black community. The virus itself has been more deadly for us due to pre-existing conditions, unfortunately due to lesser quality healthcare than most of us have. In addition, most black, many Black Americans do not have the ability to work from home due to their type of job, which means they're constantly putting themselves at risk to put food on their tables. For Black students starting their college search, the pandemic is added stress and pressure. School closures mean loss of access to systems in place 
to support student mental health. And in addition, some may lose access to resources they cannot gain otherwise, for example, internet, food, and guidance during this time. COVID-19 has not only exposed racism, but also economic inequality. In addition to all this, there, are also, there have also been process changes within the past two decades to the college application process. It has changed drastically, starting with the Common App. When it first started in the 70s, only 15 institutions were involved. And now there are over 900 participating. And this is the application that most students will use to apply to college. Many of our parents did not use this. And this book can serve as a guide if they want to be more involved in the application process. In addition, social media has also been more prominent. And many institutions use social media to interact with prospective students. And in addition, it can affect one's application depending on the content that the profile contains. And this is something that some students just don't know. There's also been an increase in parental guidance within the past two decades um, due to students being more financially dependent on their, on their family, which means that parents play a bigger role in the ultimate decision for their college. And there's also the amount of financial aid. Um, the amount of financial aid the government dishes out to colleges and universities hasn't changed in the past two decades, which means a lot of institutions aren't being given enough aid to support their schools, which means they have to increase tuition for us. It makes it more expensive. And although a lot of us receive some sort of financial aid, it oftentimes isn't enough. And in fact, in 2015, only 1.5% of undergrads received a full ride, and that's not a lot at all. COVID-19 may also have some lasting effects on the college application process. For example, the test optional option um, even big name schools have been going test optional due to test cancellations during the pandemic. For example, Harvard and the University of Virginia. Um, this means more applicants are applying, but there are less people getting in, which means that students need to find new ways to boost their applications without all the extracurriculars or the test scores. In addition, financial aid is also going to be affected since the pandemic hit a lot of colleges and students hard. In order to keep their current students, many institutions are going to provide more financial aid to them first, which doesn't leave a lot for incoming students, which um, in addition, they'll most likely accept more students applying ED, early decision, since it requires commitment without knowing the financial aid package first. Uh, these are all things that need to be considered when applying to college during this time. Now that you have an idea of the changes that have been made to the college admissions process since the fourth edition was released, we would like to share with you how we're aiming to update the data collection for the college profiles in the fifth edition. Clearly, there was a lot to consider, so how can you write a five-minute survey that encompasses all relevant information? We should strive to ask questions that are culturally and politically relevant and questions that address racism and potential stressors for Black students. However, we also need to address um, how the institution uplifts and empowers Black students. We should also look to ask how the social and romantic life for Black students on campuses, as it's important for Black students to know if they will be suffering from isolation or if there will be um, boundless social interaction for them. We should also look at questions about the school's best attributes, their sports, facilities, perks, and programs, and their strongest educational programs. And finally, we should ask the general features of the campus. How does it look physically and what is the surrounding area like? In the, in the creation of a survey, the process can get a little bit messy at times. For me, what we started to do was have students in Dr. Graves' African-American Psychological Perspectives J-Term course review the literature on factors that predict academic success of Black American college students, and then develop their own surveys for current college students to assess these factors at their home campus. I compiled a master list containing all 176 survey question items and have spent hours this semester organizing, tagging, color coding, and rearranging these items. I've created almost 10 documents that code them based on different topics such as financial aid, questions about staff and students, race-specific questions, general information, and other categories. I'm creating updated versions of the survey with lower priority and redundant questions trimmed based on their relevance due to the literature review and how they hold up to the original survey. And each updated survey is sent to the team for peer review. The goal is to trim the survey down to make it completable in roughly five minutes, containing only the best and most informative items. And once the surveys are administered, 
We hope to use the data that is collected from them to be able to construct a book full of hundreds of empirically based college profiles, which will act as a guide for future generations of black college students. As an example, here is a snippet of the fourth edition's profile on Beloit College. This snippet shows that the campus and classes are small and black students enjoy relatively close relationships with their professors, which is important as mentorship can, in, can heavily um, boost academic performance. However, there are only 50 black students out of a body of 1,200, and students often feel distressed due to the social conditions. Black students tend to not socialize at white parties and vice versa, and the clubs for black students, while very active, tend to be rather small. For college profiles, we want to be able to describe the best features that each campus has to offer, general information about the college, and information that is specific to the racial climate on campus. We want to access the total staff and undergrad populations so that we can break down by race to see the proportion of Black staff and students on campus to examine the representation. If possible, we would also like to break down by gender as well to determine if Black men and Black women are performing equally. There's also general information to consider. What, is, what are the sports, clubs, and facilities that are being offered on campus? How is the tuition cost? Is the location friendly? And what are the financial aid packages looking like? We should also look at the best features that each campus has to offer because we want to paint a fair and balanced picture that displays both the, pos both the positives and negatives that the campus has for Black students. Additionally, information specifically for Black students is important because we need to see how they are uplifted on the campus and what the college is doing to empower them. We also need to see if they are being underserved or if there are areas that they are struggling in. And we need to ask how the college plans to address this for future enrollments. Where we stand and goals for the future. We're still in the early phases of development as this is an ambitious undertaking that we only began a couple months ago. We expect that it will take the rest of this calendar year to collect all the data because students will not be back on their campuses until fall due to COVID. We hope to reach out to school administrators, student engagement representatives, athletic representatives, and campus security to begin forming the profiles this spring and summer. We are also reviewing social media posts, such as the Black at Harvard forums, where students can share their race-based their race -based experiences at the institution with a safe and honest, honest space. Stay tuned for early 2022 for the fifth edition of the Black Students' Guide to Colleges. While the timing of the guide may have been too late to help Michelle, her little brother is a high school sophomore this year. Input from students like Michelle will be able to help future students like her brother have an informed choice when finding the college that is best fit for them. Thank you for allowing us to present at Spires and I hope that you enjoyed our presentation. Thank you so much for that presentation. Uh, if people have questions uh, for our panel of presenters, please type those into the chat function and we're happy to pass them along. Uh, anybody have questions for our panelists? What was it like working, you know, as a team on this project? Um, it was really difficult because um, this is not really like an, it's not for like a class. It's more so like something that we're doing on the side. So juggling schoolwork and then trying to organize over Zoom meetings when everybody has all these different programs was going on. It was pretty difficult at times, but um, we managed to, you know, like, you know, again, peer review is very emphasized with our unit. We've been um, sending things back and forth. We've been sharing resources and surveys, and we've been um, doing our best to, like, you know, edit for each other, review what we've written, and things like that to make sure that we have um, something good to present. Excellent. We have, I guess, the end of our time right now for your session and on to our next. Thank you, Will, Tashera, and Isabel for your presentation today. Thank you for having us. Great. So our next presentation is going to be from Caleb Anthony. And we're moving to, a, I guess, the end of our time right now for your session and on to our next. Thank you, Will, Tashera, and Isabel for your presentation today. Thank you for having us. Great. So our next presentation 